Well, here in Australia, we have a way to give children living with cerebral palsy a better life, but currently it's illegal. Stem cell treatment using umbilical cord blood is allowed in many places right around the world and it can get a child with cerebral palsy moving a whole lot more and with a lot less pain. Our laws against it are being branded archaic in a new campaign for change. This is the Munns family. Brody was diagnosed with CP at 18 months old. But when his sister Zoe was born, he underwent a sibling umbilical cord blood clinical trial. And here to tell us more about that is Professor Iona Novak and Brody, Brody and his gorgeous mum, Brenda. Nice to see you all. <laughs> <laughs> That's you. Uh, Brenda, we might start with you. What was it like when you first uh, realised that Brody had CP? Um, well, we were told at 18 months that he had suffered a stroke, um, something that I didn't know even occurred in, in children, let alone when it happened, was apparently when I was still pregnant. Wow. Um, oh, what were the effects of that? It was a lot of guilt. I thought, what, what had I done while I was pregnant? Um, which is nothing, of course. Which is no. not, I know, yeah. definitely nothing. But as a mum, I think we all just yeah. want the best for our, our children. And, <laughs> and um, what did you notice in him that was, that was strange? Because you, you had a gut feeling something yeah, was wrong. Yeah, so from when he was about nine months of age, I noticed that he wasn't using his left side as often as he should compared to his right. So when he was crawling, he would sort of drag, not drag, but just bring his left side rather than put support on it, like, like his right. And if he was playing with a bowl or a toy, it was just his right hand, really. His left was not that often coming around to help play with, you know, something that he required two hands. Mm. Um, and when he would walk, he would lose his balance and um, would walk like he had had a stroke. Was it but easy to get a diagnosis? Very quick once we got it sorted, okay. yeah. Then, of course, along came Zoe. Brody's baby sister, <laughs> and you were able to use oh. the umbilical blood from from, from Zoe. her. Yeah, and what? Zoe. There's Zoe mm. there. That's right. Your little sister. Now, what difference did you notice? What what impact did that treatment have? We actually noticed a big difference two weeks after his infusion. Wow. <laughs> so, um, my husband and I actually noticed that he was wow. using his left hand without us even having to remind him to use it and... That's a big boy. <laughs> that is a big boy, is that and, you? And um, he would just use it without us having to remind him and just it sort of came around with everything that he wasn't able to do to support it. He then started using it. Professor Novak, how does this actually work? How, does, how do these umbilical cord treatments actually help children with cerebral palsy? Yeah, so umbilical cord blood is rich in a range of stem cells. And when we give it back to children wow. using uh, a process through a drip, we actually find that it improves their movement skills. It has anti-inflammatory properties. And we see from clinical trials that children's movement skills are improved more than just from rehabilitation. So these are small, but they're important games for families. So why on earth is this treatment illegal in Australia? Mm. Great question. In Australia, umbilical cord blood is a legal treatment for blood cancers and the 40,000 samples in the Australian bank are saved for Australians with blood cancers. However, we'd like those rules updated and they are archaic because there's actually no process for us to add a new disease or a new condition to those rules. And that's what our campaign is about, getting those rules changed so that children can have this treatment here in Australia. We often hear about um, stem cell holidays where families go overseas to have this sort of therapy, mm. this treatment, because they can't get it here. And that can have pretty terrible ramifications. I was reading uh, that uh, some of the safeguards aren't in place, that sometimes uh, teeth can appear in brain matter. I mean... The cost. The cost of it is obviously extremely prohibitive. Uh, what can go wrong when families do decide to, to, to get this treatment outside the country? Every week I get an email from a family asking should they <coughs> mortgage their home to go overseas to wow. buy stem cells and these private clinics are still selling stem cells to families for twenty to $50,000 Australian a dose. Some clinics are good at disclosing what they're giving, other clinics don't disclose what they're giving, so the side effects you were talking about from clinics that are uh, well, not even human cells. Using uh, rabbit cells. Rabbit I cells, read. that's right. Yeah. Um, and children are our most important future, so we believe it's really important that families 
family should have this treatment here in Australia. So right now, the only way they can get it in Australia is to save a sibling cord sample with a company called Cellcare, which is a private company that offers this service to families for free of charge if they have a child with cerebral palsy, and then they can hope to get in a clinical trial. Um, otherwise, their only option is to go overseas, and that's why we want this treatment available here in Australia. If you've made it legal here, would you need more donors? Would you need more umbilical cord samples to add to that 40,000 that are on the shelf? Right now, 40,000 would be a great start, but of course, as people might want repeat treatments, we would need, and that's a possibility for the public to donate samples to the cord bank when they're having a baby. So how do we change this, this legislation? How do we get it through? So we have a petition going, which you can find on cerebralpalsy.org, on change.org, and you can sign up to help us get the rules changed with the cord bank. Brody, do you reckon the people power will help make this happen if you get a big yeah? No. <laughs> yes. uh, how about you show no. them your muscles? No, you reckon? Show them how strong you are now. Yeah, oh, yeah. Check wow. out those muscles. Awesome. Um, Brenda, wow. wow. To, have, to have one of your children uh, bring the other one so far ahead as well must be just yeah. so gratifying. That's when Zoe you can actually see. named her Zoe because Aww. it actually, in Greek, it means life. Oh, <laughs> you're making us tear up now. <laughs> uh, Brody and Brenda, thank you so much. And Professor Novak, thank you for coming thank on to explain this to us. Thank you.